as part of our series of conversations with artists about their art. Today we talk to Rolson about his 2009 portrait of civil rights leader Andrew Young. What's your method in the studio? Why do you, how do you, how do you, do you, do you paint silently? Do you, do you have music going in the background or are you listening for the voice of your subject? It's a strange voice, I must tell you, and I cannot tell uh, whose voice is that, mine or somebody else's. Indeed, it is a complete silence in the studio. I never listen to music when I work, never. For six, seven, eight, ten hours, it's complete sin uh, silence uh, there. And as photorealistic as they look, they have nothing to do with uh, photography. With, with, with all due respect to photography, uh, I do think that uh, my paintings don't look like photographs. Photographs look like my paintings. And um, it's, again, it, it's all about this uh, dialogue uh, inside of me. I think at the end of the day, it is my voice, but I do believe that they use my voice to speak out. Otherwise, the connection wouldn't be happening. I'm, I'm 47 now, and I started when I was six. That means uh, 41 years. I've done literally nothing else in my life. I never worked for anybody, never worked anything else but painting, mostly portraits, mostly studying that amazing uh, subject called human nature and the, the very essence of that human nature. So what I'm saying is that if there is something going on there, if the visitor uh, gets intrigued with my work, if standing in front of Lincoln's portrait or Andy Yang's portrait, you hear their voice, you hear their message on a subconscious level, on a, on a very special frequency, I would say, artistic uh, frequency level, then my job is done. I guess the best answer, is to, if I if have to summarize it in one sentence, is yes, they use my voice. You know Andrew Young very well. You've told us you've traveled with him and and you have in your, in your mind uh, a lot of memories of him. How was that process of creating him for canvas different, say, than creating President Lincoln or the portrait of all the presidents in the same room? You have a life sitting with Andrew Young. Can you tell us a little bit about that, that process in dealing with someone who's actually, a, really, for, for want of a better phrase, a living legend? I'm very fortunate to have him as a friend. We, we travel together, we, uh, we talk, we dine, we visited a uh, Nigerian president to Bassinger together in Africa. We've been together here in, in Washington, D.C. We, we go down to Florida, various, uh, uh, various places. So I've been extremely fortunate to observe him very up close. Interestingly enough, that happened after the portrait. In other words, <laughs> when I met him, I met him also, we met on several occasions in Atlanta. If you live in Atlanta, you meet Andrew Young. <laughs> That's inevitable. Uh, but he, he came to the studio. We, we spoke for a little while, I took a few pictures, and that was it. I did his portrait. What I'm trying to say is that you get him immediately. He's as friendly and as approachable as he can get, yet he's your older, wise friend who is right there to tell you a story, but much more important to listen to your story and to <clears throat> create that type of atmosphere that is extremely unique Andrew Yang type of atmosphere. And um, <clears throat> I'm pleased with the, with the result, I'm pleased with the portrait naturally because uh, it captures the, the essence of Andrew Yang's legacy on my artistic opinion. That the fact that he communicates uh, <clears throat> with with different generations, with different political uh, um, <clears throat> powers, 
different countries as an ambassador of the United Nations, as a mayor of Atlanta for two, two terms, as someone who brought the Olympics to Atlanta, as the <clears throat> basically ambassador of the, of the goodwill, of the positive, uh, uh, positive energy and, uh, and human understanding, he's one of a kind. So the portrait, uh, in my opinion, much more than just a physical likeness, much more than uh, describing and depicting his unique presence and unique soul, has cares that particular message, that particular Andrew Young energy uh, within itself that would be described in one sentence as the, the dialogue must go on, the dialogue between generations, the dialogue between different political parties, uh, different <coughs> philosophical uh, uh, schools or race or, or anything. So uh, if nothing else, keeping the dialogue alive is a guarantee for uh, for for the mankind to have better existing, uh, <clears throat> better future, and some some hope for what's coming. So this <clears throat> is right there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron.